How many of you that are watching, and I'm talking particularly to Christian believers, own a cross? You know, a wooden cross on the wall, or maybe even a metal or silver or gold cross on your necklaces. What does that cross represent to you? What does it symbolize? What does it remind you of? If you are a true Christian sold out to Yahushua, Jesus Christ, it should represent to you the power of the cross, correct? It is a reminder of what Christ did on the cross for you, for the salvation of your very soul. How many of you that are watching have at one time or another even held that cross when you prayed? As you are going through great trials and testing of your faith, and you may have been in trouble and you needed God's deliverance. Why would you hold a cross? It is because it represents something very powerful and dearly to you, correct? It is because you have faith that there is power in that cross. Let me ask you, would you ever mock a cross? Would you ever allow someone else to mock that cross that symbolizes your salvation? Do you know that there are pastors within this Christian community who very subtle, in a very subtle way, mock that very cross that they claim they preach and they're teaching you to do the same thing and you do not even know it. But before I go further about that, I would like to ask you another question. How many of you that are watching, specifically Christian believers again, know that anointing oil is very biblical? Anointing oil, if prayed over, in the name of Yahushua our Messiah, by a righteous man or woman in faith, is blessed and holds power in so much that the Bible instructs us to let the elders anoint the sick in their midst and pray over them so they may be healed. What does that anointing all represent? It represents the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, correct? It represents the anointing, saving, delivering, and healing power and the life that is in Yahushua HaMashiach's name and blood. Correct? Let me ask you, would you ever mock a vial of anointing oil? Or allow others to mock the anointing oil? Let me tell you, there are people in this Christian community that claim to be Christians who want to make you, be want to make you believe in a subtle way that if you use anointing oil that you are practicing witchcraft. Do you understand that if people are mocking anointing oil and saying that some ministry or a pastor who uses anointing oil is practicing witchcraft, do you know that they are blaspheming the very anointing of the Holy Spirit? If you have read your Bible, you should understand that is basically coming very close to the unforgivable sin, and that is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit if they go too far. Now before I continue and I show you who is recruiting people within this Christian community to mock the power of the cross and reject the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you one more question. These weapons of warfare that God has given us people, the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, are these weapons of warfare against the devil and his demons and his servants carnal or spiritual weapons? Now as for a mighty wind ministry and what we believe, these weapons of warfare are of course divine and spiritual weapons given to us by God to overcome the devil and his demons. Because only the power in Yeshua's name and blood and the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit can defeat the devil and his demons. And oh yeah, we wouldn't mock the cross or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now this fake pastor, George C., and one of his henchwomen, T.J. Brooke 88, also known as Miss T.J. Brooke, who claims to be a Christian, they have different ideas about this. And they express their view in opposition to these things openly. 
I'm going to show you how these two wolves in sheep's clothing and main core enemies of a mighty wind ministry are openly mocking and rejecting the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and pushing others to do the same thing in this very community. I'm going to show you how they are propagating lies to try to make you believe that if you put your faith in the power of the cross and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit for your weapons of warfare against Satan and his demons that you are in fact making an utter fool out of yourself just like a mighty wind ministry. And according to them you are practicing witchcraft and magic. I'm not kidding. You will see them propagating slanderous lies to try to recruit you against the mighty wind ministry to reject the prophetic knowledge, the spirit of prophecy that God tries to give you and desires to give you through this ministry and they're trying to push you to mock the spirit of prophecy, to mock the power of the cross and to mock the anointing of the Holy Spirit the same way as they are doing. I am warning you, these two are enticing you to hell. They're after your faith and after your soul. And you had better watch the rest of this video. George despises the gift of prophecy which the Bible says not to do in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.20. George despises the wisdom and the understanding and the prophetic knowledge God desires to give this generation through this ministry that can and will preserve their lives and souls in Yahushua the Messiah if his people but apply that wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says that God's people perish and are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. God doesn't want you to be without knowledge. God doesn't want you to be deceived. This is why he sends his prophets and his apostles in his mercy who are the eyes of the body of Yahushua. Who can warn you of the coming danger, the coming judgment. Who can correct you as God leads. George despises the prophets and the gift of prophecy and wisdom and he proves this by continuously attacking and mocking this ministry. One of the reasons he is recently again mocking this ministry is because God warns us through this ministry what Satan is showing in what we consider horror and science fiction movies is what he really plans to do in reality. And he mocks this generation as people laugh and having a good time and they're eating their popcorn while well, very soon as the Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear as they see that which they thought was only fantasy and horror or science fiction come to pass in reality. Yes, I am talking about demonic creatures, demonic aliens, zombies, werewolves, Nephilim, the giants that will walk this very earth very soon in the great tribulation to torment man. Your only hope to escape these things that are to come to pass and to be protected in the coming days of horror is to know Yahushua the Messiah in a loving and obedient relationship in which you put your faith in him only for the salvation of your soul and to escape these horrors that are to come to pass. You have to know the Messiah in a repentant relationship in which you prove that you love him by turning away from your sins and keeping his commandments. I'll remind you that the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 says that God's people are those who keep his commandments, not those who break him, but keep him and have the testimony of Yahushua the Messiah. Those are the people that Satan is after. Those are the people that are a threat to Satan's kingdom. Those are the people that Satan wars against. Are you one of those people? Or are you those part of those who dismiss and break God's command and say, well, the Sabbath can be any day of the week. I don't care. Yahushua, the Son of God, has promised us His commandment-keeping children, His faithful men and women and even children, that they have been given the authority in His name and in His blood to trample upon the enemy. He has given us weapons of warfare, the power of the cross, His name, His Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I mean. And these weapons of warfare are spiritual weapons of warfare, not carnal, to defeat the devil. Because people, you cannot defeat 
or battle the Prince of Darkness with man-made weapons. Okay? God has warned us through Prophet Elizabeth Elijah that carnal weapons, if used against Satan, will only multiply evil, not defeat evil. Only the power of the cross, the power in Yeshua's name, God's resurrection power that was displayed in His Son, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit can break the yokes and bondages and can defeat the devil and his kingdom. Now, no matter how many times we explain this to the people, and no matter how many videos we put out to prove to you that yes, aliens are biblical, and yes, Satan counterfeiting the rising of the saints through his zombies and his demons coming from the bottom of the spit. And no matter how many times we explain to you that yes, man turning into beasts such as werewolves is biblical, this fake pastor, and I remind you these videos are a blessing to thousands of people, this fake pastor wants to make you believe that Satan is not going to do all these things and that all these things can doctrinally not be backed up and that a mighty good ministry is backing away from any theological discussion while he subtly dismisses and ignores the many videos we put out that are full of biblical teachings and sound doctrine to back all these things up. And he says, ha, you gotta be kidding me. Space aliens, zombies, ha, and now werewolves and vampires, you got to be kidding me and he mocks these prophetic realities for which God wants to warn this generation of what Satan tries to do and he wants to make you believe, George wants to make you believe that if you are believing these prophetic realities that are to come to pass and if you are preparing yourself that you are in fact in sin for doing so and you are making a fool out of yourself and you had better repent and oh yeah he basically teaches you that even if these things would happen, putting your faith in the cross would be a foolish thing to do so. Now I'm going to show you how he does it. Now before I show you specifically how he does this, I need to explain to you the following. In A Mighty Wind Prophecy 21, which was entitled, Are You Ready for a Shock? Gabriel has blown his horn, which was spoken through Prophet Elizabeth Elijah by Yahweh and Yahushua HaMashiach, God Almighty, in which God himself instructs his people that when Satan will counterfeit the rising of the saints and the great tribulation as his demons will come from the bottom of the spit to take over the heathen corpses which will become the reality of zombies for God's people to take a board or a piece of wood and to anoint that with anointing oil. A piece of wood or a board or a wooden stick that is anointed with oil is of course to represent the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Is this difficult to understand? I don't think so. Would you mock a wooden cross? Would you mock anointing oil that is to represent the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks all the yokes and bondages? in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach in faith? I don't think so. So why would you mock this? Or why would you allow others to mock this? Doesn't make any sense. If you take this anointing oil and you, you anoint this piece of wood in faith, in faith, it represents the power of the cross and the Holy Spirit. And in faith, you hit those zombies in the neck and you say to them, the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach stands against you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. I rebuke you, Satan, and I bind you, demons, and you must flee from me. And they will. By the power of the cross, in faith, they must flee. And those demons will leave, and those zombies will crumple to the ground and be defeated. Now why does Yah tell us to use a board and anointing oil to beat those zombies? Is it because it's a physical weapon or a spiritual weapon? It's a spiritual weapon, correct? Because only the power of the cross can defeat 
a spiritual enemy. Yahweh has warned us through Prophet Elizabeth Elijah in the prophecies that man-made weapons will only multiply the demonic undead. In other words, people, you cannot use guns or rifle to battle a spiritual enemy. Now, fake Pastor George C. George and his henchwoman T.J. Brooke 88, they try to ridicule and kill your faith in the power of the cross. They take away, or they try to rob and take away from you this knowledge that Yah is giving you in the Holy Prophecies and the Mighty Wit Ministry. I'm going to show you how he does this. As he first makes a mockery out of the Kingdom of Darkness as if it's just a big joke. And then, George proclaims the following. Now I know that the prescribed remedy was a stick anointed with oil and then hit the zombie on the neck. I don't know about you, but when I got this big guy coming after me, a stick with oil isn't what I'm looking for. No sorry, Bob. For me, Zombie Max by Hornaday. Now, first of all, what kind of a pastor has a zombie mask? And what kind of a pastor would tell his congregation member to put on a zombie mask to undermine and play around with the kingdom of darkness like that in these end times as if it's just a big joke? All to mock a prophetic ministry like a mighty wind ministry and reject the power of the cross and the Holy Spirit like that teaching people to put their faith in man-made weapons such as rifles and guns. As you have just seen, George is mocking and rejecting the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then he puts his faith in a rifle or a handgun. Now can you say carnally minded? Now at the same time, George's propaganda minister DJ Brook 88, as usual, digs up some dirt from the internet to try to make you believe that if you take a piece of wood and anoint that with oil, which God has instructed us to do in Prophecy 21 in the Mighty Wind, spoken through Prophet Elizabeth Elijah, which is to represent the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, DJ Brook tries to make you believe that if you would do so, you are in fact practicing witchcraft and magic. And she's gathered some footage of a certain witch using wood and oil for her twisted purposes. And T.G. Brooks says, see, this is what a mighty wind does. Little spells, witchcraft, and magic. Now first of all, how stupid and utterly dumb and even dumber are those who dare to believe such garbage. Because who but Satan would twist and pervert the truth in this manner to accuse the spirit of prophecy in a mighty wind of practicing witchcraft and magic. The fact that Satan counterfeit and copies everything that God does or instructs his people to do and the fact that Satan has his witches using wood and oil for their sick purposes and their occult practices, does that nullify the power of the cross? Does that mean that everybody who is using anointing oil as the Bible instructs us is actually practicing witchcraft? Well, according to T.G. Brook 88's twisted and diabolical lo logic, it does. The fact that Satan, through his witches, copies and counterfeits and twists and defiles what God does or what God's people are instructed to do, does that nullify the word of God? 
All Satan does is copy and counterfeit God and what God does. Does the fact that Satan pretends to be God to a lot of people, the entire world if he could, mean that the one true living God is evil? No, of course not. It means that Satan counterfeits. Satan does not nullify the word of God, neither does he nullify the things that God instructs his people to do. Okay, anybody with the Holy Spirit especially should be able to understand this. Now T.G. Brooke 88 clearly does not understand this. She shows how full she is of the Jezebel spirit trying to kill the prophetic knowledge God tries to give you and rob and kill your very faith. Make no mistake about it, these two are enticing you to the very pits of hell by tempting you and pushing you to mock and reject the very spirit of prophecy. Now here you have them folks, two blasphemers who teach you to put your faith in rifles and guns to battle the prince of darkness. Doesn't get more carnally minded than this, does it? And who teach you and push you to mock and reject the spirit of prophecy and to consider the power of the cross and the anointing of the Holy Spirit nothing more than witchcraft. Hmm. I wonder who they are truly serving. What kind of a pastor and Christian would try to rob, steal and kill the knowledge and wisdom that comes from heaven? What kind of a pastor and what kind of a Christian would try to steal your faith in the power of the cross. Satan comes to rob, steal, kill and destroy and he does it through vessels like these two, vessels of all kinds of uncleanness and blasphemies. Are you going to allow yourself to be deceived by these two? Are you believing the lies of these cursed, reprobate spawns of Satan who put their faith in the arm of flesh rather than in the power of the cross? If so, then all I can say is you deserve what you will get on Judgment Day.